Masters of Animea is a blend of RPG and RTS-like gameplay. The story starts out with your character Otto completing his exams, which are kind of like a rite of passage for this world. He must complete these tests before he can marry his fiancée. During the exams is where you'll learn the basics of the game and get introduced to the main villain. He essentially rips apart your fiancée into different essences and you must earn them back to make her whole again. <laughs> Za. Is this your doing? What have you done? I'm simply breaking chains forged by Shapers centuries ago. You vowed to serve and defend Spark. I serve Spark. I'm saving her. Now, allow me to unbind your soul from the Shapers' wicked creed. No! Ah! Anna! Otto! I see that Anna's betrothed has earned the Shaper's staff. How could you kill Anna? She's not dead, only sundered. But the Shapers wouldn't have taught you anything about the forbidden powers now, would they? The story isn't anything original, nor is it very interesting, but it did present some interesting ideas. One is that while you're going about your adventure, you'll earn back your fiancé's essences. The first one you gain back is her heart. I thought some effort and creativity was put into the dialogue between Otto and his essence of his fiancé's art. She speaks very emotionally and doesn't think things through. She's naive and charming in how she approaches conversations, and some humor does come out of this. I know it sounds crazy, but my mind is fine. It's my Anna's I'm trying to recover. Can you take me to the Well of Whispers? I need to save her. The tombs of the ancient Sheepers. Hmm. It'll cost you. Meet me in Logos. It's just outside of the canyon. I can't land here. He... just left. He could have thrown us a rope. He must think I'm mad. I like it. Sadly, the game missed an opportunity with her other essences. You earn her mind back next, and I felt like they could have had her speaking from a very logical point of view, which would have been a good contrast to her emotional side. Next, you earn back her body, and I thought this would have been a great opportunity to play it up as being more physical and wanting to smash everything. Just something simple to give each essence personality but her heart is really the only aspect of her different personalities that has any type of personality. I potentially like the idea of her different essences driving Otto nuts, and there could be some really good comedy that comes out of this. While the story isn't anything special, the gameplay is where you're gonna spend most of your enjoyment. At first glance, you might say this game looks like Pikmin, and you'd be right. You control Otto, and he can summon many different guardians to help him on his quest. These different guardians have a special use for combat, and also in puzzle areas. You'll have the foot soldier guardians that can be your main melee force. They can also be used to push large blocks around an environment too. The archers are your ranged fighters. During battle, you can station them within bushes to provide them with more armor. Archers can also fire upon targets and corrupted orbs that are out of reach for your normal foot soldiers. There's guardians that can generate more magic energy for you during fights, and they can also summon a useful shield that will help you get through dangerous areas. Larger melee fighters can also be summoned that provide a morale boost to your soldiers, while also being able to dig up items during puzzle areas. And lastly, you gain guardians that can be used to summon these giant figures figures that you can use to then take care of large debris in your path. To summon guardians you'll need anima, which is the magical energy within the game. You'll gain anima from smashing objects within the environment and defeating enemies. Once you have at least one orb of anima, you can summon a guardian to your side. If you are needed different guardians, you can recall summon guardians and gain back that used anima to then use it again for a different class. During battle, you need to juggle different guardians as you're trying to defeat the enemies. Most of the encounters will be you facing off against a few larger enemies. There's a flow of making sure you have enough anima and generating more anima to create the soldiers you need to work through a fight. Since you have five different classes to use, there is some variation to how you might tackle the fights. I usually try 
tried to summon guardians to continually generate more anima for me, used foot soldiers to keep the enemies focused on them, and then had the archers in the back providing a consistent means of damage to those enemies. Battles do require a lot of micromanaging to succeed. Enemies will show when they are going to attack, which gives you some time to react and move your guardians out of harm's way. Also, you can use your guardians as a means to split the enemy forces, so you just have to focus on killing one instead of both at the same time. One way I did this is I used my foot soldiers to essentially distract one of the larger enemies, and then used my archers to take out the main force. This was a good way of splitting the enemy forces and being able to focus on one at a time. It can be a juggling act, to be able to succeed in these battles, but it's also satisfying when you come out victorious. During combat, you'll spend most of your time managing your troops. You do have a basic melee attack, but most of the damage is done through your guardians. You can use your anima to enhance their attacks, so that they briefly can do more damage to your targets. Overall, combat encounters are fun, and you get rated on how well you do, which contributes to how much experience you'll earn. Like I mentioned before, most of the enemies are these larger foes, which makes most of the fights feel like boss encounters. Some of the encounters can go on for a bit too long, which results in the combat feeling tedious at times. I do think having situations where you're fighting a large group of weaker enemies may have helped to change up the flow of combat a bit. When you're not in combat, you'll be exploring and solving little puzzles. The game has a fixed camera, so this allows the developers to hide stuff in the background. The game has this use of a green magical arrow that will point you towards the right objective, but you'll want to go in the opposite direction as there are many items to find that'll increase your health and magical power. Other hidden items can net you more experience too. One thing I do like is how the levels will indicate when you've reached the end. They will have this white circle and this will let you know if you want to decide to end the level or would you like to go back and grab all the collectibles and finish the challenges before you complete it. The game does let you repeat stages, so you can always come back to them too. Puzzles incorporate your guardians in some way. Later into the game, you'll need to use your guardians in tandem with each other to solve puzzles. You may need one guardian to create a shield that will remove the corruption on the ground, which will allow your archers to be able to get in and attack that orb. Builders were truly clever. Puzzles are not too hard, and some are optional, leading to hidden items. They help break up the combat sections very nicely. During two levels of the game, you'll have access to a forest nymph that will assist you, because you're trying to get through this forest fog, but you can't pass through it, but she can. As you control her, you can grab these magical mushrooms, which will put up these protective barriers that will let you pass through the fog. She repeats the same lines over and over again, but I did appreciate the variety in having something else you can control in the game. One particular part that I did find annoying were these two levels where you needed to race through a location as there was this giant death wall behind you. If you didn't go fast enough, you would essentially die very fast. I do like that they use this as a means to change up the pacing for the traditional levels, which have a very moderate pace to them, but I didn't like the trial and error nature 
nature to them. These parts will require you to break something really fast or solve a puzzle within a short period of time. Thankfully, these spots are short and only few and far between. One area that I think would have helped aid the replay within the game is the addition of co-op. If it just had a simple co-op arena, that would have been a great way to be able to revisit many of the combat encounters, but with a friend. They could have used this as a cool means to be able to have both players controlling different anima so you had to communicate with each other to essentially succeed. Overall, Masters of Anima is a fun game. It takes a familiar formula that is seen in the Pikman games, and it generally has a fun sense of exploration, some pretty good puzzle areas, and some fun combat. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, check out some of my other ones. If you'd like to help support the channel, check out my Patreon page at the end of this video in the description down below. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.